usfmsports.net. Video on demand. Booker Corrigan here with Coach Paul Cantabene, head coach of the Stevenson Mustangs men's lacrosse team. Want to do a postseason wrap-up. Coach, a great year for Stevenson once again. Let's talk about a bunch of your seniors who came into Stevenson four years ago and certainly made their mark on this program in their time. Yeah, I mean, I'm really happy with how the senior class worked out. It was one of our smaller ones with only 10, 11 guys in it, but um, I thought they did a great job. Ian Ballin, especially, you know, being named a third team All American and just had such a, one of the best careers for a goalie here. It was unbelievable. You know, really were happy for him. And then Justin Lay, you know, having being a midi D for three years and playing offense for us this year, playing so great, his scoring, well, I think, 29 goals for us and did a really unbelievable job in the midfield. And Nick Rossi, you know, big time Nick Rossi, you like to say him, you know, uh, he came on late. You know, kind of struggled early in the year, but ended really well. And, and him and Justin both got honorable mention All American, which were really well deserving. And then, you know, some of our role players like Matt Shank and uh, uh, Pat McGee and Brian Bottolato, I think we all got great contributions out of them. And, uh, you know, Andrew McCrum's the really the kid that actually stands out in that senior class a little bit, having such a solid year from the midi D position. And uh, we're just so happy that he got honorable mention All American this year as well. So, you know, I think it's a really uh, in depth class who just did a great job supporting the team and, uh, you know, really carried on the legacy you know we challenged them early in the year to carry on the legacy at Stevenson with the other teams that have set and I think they did it you know getting 18 wins this year and uh, five losses only against the top three teams in the country and let's go back to all the way into January you guys certainly graduated a wealth of talent off of that 2011 squad what was your mindset and how much were you aware of the freshmen's ability to impact the program at an early state this year well, I think that we, uh, early on, we knew we had really talented players, and uh, we knew they were coming in, they were very touted, and uh, we knew that they were going to be good, we just didn't know how good. You know, we didn't know Stephen Bandick was going to lead us in points as a freshman. Uh, you know, we didn't know we were going to get Pat Cannon solid contrib contributions. Uh, we didn't know, you know, Michael Crow was going to be as good as he was, or Billy Bergoyne switching from um, attack to midfield is going to be as good as he was. So, you know, I think we got some real solid minutes out of them. Connor Carew, again, another one, we kind of an unknown, but we knew they were talented, coming from great pl uh, programs, who were the best players on their programs. And uh, so they, I think they did a really good job developing as the season went on. And a lot of the guys you didn't even see this year, the younger Bucks really did a great job getting better as the year went on, helping us in practice. And those are a lot of names you're going to see next year uh, come on to the squad. And, uh, you know, we're very happy with the development. But, you know, it took a while. You know, we were playing early on, all those guys, young guys, and winning some close games. And then as the year got on, you know, they really knew what we expected out of them and got better. And that's what we expect out of every freshman class, including next year's talented class as well. So we're really going to have to understand how it is to win and what it takes to win. And let's go all the way back to your big wins here at the new Mustang Stadium. Beautiful new facility. You guys open up with a big win over Haverford and Western New England, teams that were nationally ranked on their way in. But you were able to use your defense to really set the tone for the season. Talk a little bit about your defense and some of those early wins and how they made their mark on how they were going to impact 2012. Well, I think, you know, Tim Pauls, first of all, our defensive coordinator, did such a great job of them bringing them along. You know, they're all new starters for us. And, you know, Kyle Holacek last year being a, a freshman for us really came on and developed. And then, you know, Parker Bratton transferring in from St. John's really helped. And Kyle Finley we knew was going to be a great player, and he really developed. And then, But uh, I think our poll unit and Ryan Rubenstein and Warren Pumphrey really coming on this year as sophomores did a great job for us. But they all made All-American. I think it's really a, a in-depth squad and led us early. You know, their domination, their understanding of what it takes to play great defense and that's kind of been a little bit of a change for us we've been known as an offensive team getting up and down and we kind of really I think settled it up a little bit more this year than we have in the past relying on the defense to hold us in some of those tight games until our offense got their feet which happened about midway through so we're really excited about them we get them all back for next year and uh, you know it's going to be a one heck of a defense I think for a few years to come and you certainly hear the name Paul Cantabene and you think face-off abilities and face-off talents. You guys improved at the face-off logo throughout this year. Uh, tell us about some of the developments that you were able to make at the face-off. Uh, you know, when you lose a guy like Ray, Whit Ray Whitty the year before, who was such a dominant guy and probably one of the best guys D3's seen in a while, you know, it's tough to replace him. But I thought we got as much as we could out of a guy like Doug Rett, who's a senior for us. We got as much as we could out of him. He faced off about 53, 54%, did a great job. And the games against Salisbury going about 50% against their great kid, who was, a, you know, first team All American. I'm really happy with the way Sam Ramatowski came along. He took over 100 face offs for us this year after taking only like 20 his first two years. And, uh, you know, and I think that the guy is really going to come along hopefully for next 
next year be great is uh, Sam Wyatt. You know, this is a big, strong kid, and uh, I really think he's going to have a great, uh, great career for us. And it's great to see him really con contribute, especially after early on being so nervous, kind of understanding coming from Tennessee, coming to this level of lacrosse. I thought he really developed. And those guys all gave us a great effort in every game we went through and uh, given us a chance to win. And that's what we needed out of those guys. And I think we got as much as we could out of all three of them this year. Let's talk specifically about Sam Wyatt. He came along later in the year, but you and I talked a number of times about his work in the weight room, his work in the off season. Was it easy for you to see that he was going to come on as a great face-off guy this early in his freshman year? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he's just such a good athlete. You know, when you squat 500 pounds and you bench 300, you know, you're going to be able to push some kids around. But, you know, he's uh, such a good athlete all over the field. He can run, he can shoot, play defense. And, you know, we just brought him along slowly. And face-offs was something he really grasped a hold of and knew he can help us out at an early time. And I think some of those games, he did a great job in the first St. Mary's game. He did a great job in a few of our playoff games to really give us a chance to win. And, uh, you know, we're really happy with the development that he, he the way he came along. We hope he's only going to get better. And then talking about your offensive skill sets, obviously Tyler Reed comes in as the guy that you think is going to run your offense. Right. Then he goes down with an injury, and Stephen Bannock certainly picked up. You alluded to that earlier. How was the Tyler Reed injury such a positive, and how did the coaches use it to help bring along some of the younger guys? Well, I think that when, you know, unfortunately we did lose Tyler early and he took him a while to play in a few games to come back. But I thought the biggest thing, it gave other kids opportunities, you know, and I think one of the biggest changes we made when Tyler went down and not only did Steven step up and play well, but we moved uh, Chris to shield from midfield to attack. And I think once we moved Chris to attack, he really is a feeder. They got the offense going. He's a really good leader talking to everybody. And that gave us a ball movement and the leadership we needed at attack uh, to be a little bit better because Tyler's more of a carrier. Bannock's more of a carrier. Pat Can is more of a carrier. We needed somebody who was going to be uh, a distributor. And, uh, you know, I think Chris really did a great job of that. And then once we got Tyler back and healthy, he was great. You know, he did great in the playoffs, did great in the last few games and was really healthy. So that really gave us four really solid attackmen. And it helped also the other, the first midfield a little bit more. Now they were getting the ball rotating more. So everything kind of came around after those first four or five games. Now, we, we kind of glanced over uh, Ryan Rubenstein and Warren Pumphrey. You mentioned them. I think the world of them as long sticks. They have the ability to disrupt your opponent's offensive game plan. Expand a little bit on Warren and Ryan as their abilities as long sticks and also in the transition game. Well, they had some, both of them had such a great year, and it's really a great one-two punch where Ryan's more of a stronger kid to play those bigger middies, and uh, Warren's more of a finesse guy, kind of a stick chaser a little bit, but he's so good at it. And so they just play off each other. They're best friends, and I think their development this year really made it tough for the other team's best middies to get on track. You know, we were able to get all over them and cause pressure, get out on them, make them throw some bad passes, put the ball on the ground, and then they're so great going from one end to the other, shooting the ball, passing the ball, getting them on the wings of face off, getting the ball off the ground. And that, I think that's what the biggest area where a defense improved along because of the because of those guys is that we didn't give other teams as many second chances because we were getting the ball off the ground so well this year and I think that really really helped us along in our offense making it easier to score goals in our defense because we're playing less defense because we got the ball out where other years we struggled that a little bit more and gave teams second chances and I um, I dubbed your defensive unit the Beastie Boys late in the year. They were certainly an imposing force. What can we expect as we move towards 2013? What can we expect out of this defensive unit? You have so many guys coming back on the defensive end. Obviously, you need to replace Ian Bolland in the cage. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what we can see on the defensive end coming up in 2013. Well, I think you're going to see more of the same. You know, I don't think we're going to change our, uh, too much. And I think those guys are a year older, you're more experienced. And, uh, you know, we're definitely going to go out and pressure teams on the perimeter. We're, uh, we're definitely going to try to get the teams to play at a faster pace and take, them out of their, take teams out of their comfort zone. And I think Tim's done a great job with some of the unusual defenses we play and the areas that we take from other teams and make it really hard on them. And we know teams are going to try to slow it down on us, but we're definitely going to go out and make those teams play at a faster speed and, you know, make them go to the goal and, you know, play that more chaotic style of what I like to call organized chaos. And then offensively, you graduate a couple guys. Obviously, uh, Nick Big Play Rossi, he's gone. We, we certainly love him in the booth. Uh, but who can we expect to see some big stuff out of uh, in the 2013 season? 
Uh, you know, I think that we have, you know, we were going to expect you're gonna see Michael Crow to be great again. I think he's going to come back in the midfield, and I think Billy Bergoran is going to be a year older. J.P. Coombs is going to be a year older. I think those guys will really step up. You know, we have a couple other guys coming back that weren't were the team last year uh, because of some grade issues. Uh, they're going to be coming back, and, uh, you know, I think that's going to help. And we have a few transfers, and we have a great freshman class. So, you know, really we think the midfield's where your bread and butter is. I think we're going to be bigger, faster, stronger there next year and a little deeper. And uh, so that's really going to help us with the overall speed that we have at the midfield position already we really think that we're going to be a lot better in the midfield area and uh, get better but we're going to miss those guys that did great contributions but you know the year before we graduated three all-americans you know this year we graduate two i think we'll be all right and then let's talk about your jv squad it's kind of unique to have a jv team that plays the schedule that your guys do we see some guys coming up off the jv team that are going to contribute next year Oh, absolutely. You know, I think we had some great kids that did really good work. So uh, one in particular, Lauren Bailey, I thought he was outstanding playing uh, in there a little bit. And, uh, you know, I think that you're going to see a whole lot of, you know, a kid named James Mullis, who's a you know, broad neck kid. Uh, he did really well. But those guys, you know, all of them are just gonna, are good players. We know they're going to develop and get better and come. And a lot of the guys that played in the varsity game this, this season were JV guys like, you know, Andrew McCrum was, I think, and Justin Lay was. And, you know, all those guys, you know, just kind of developed and got better. And that's what we expect out of a freshman is continually to get better and develop. So we alluded to the Western New England win and the Haverford win. Your season moves on, and you really kind of hold serve with winning all the games you should. You have an amazing home schedule with one loss to Salisbury, obviously in a thrilling game that we were lucky enough to cover on sfmsports.net. Talk a little bit about the home field advantage that you've created here at Mustang Stadium. Well, I think the stadium and the, uh, the, this the way it's designed, and I think it makes for a real good home field advantage. The fast turf, you know, I think the crowds are right on top of you. The lights, you know, I think our guys like playing in that aura. You know, we like playing in big time games when the lights are the brightest, and uh, we like that. So the guys have done a great job protecting the home field. You know, I think that's one of the big things. When you play as many big games as we do, uh, the home field's real important to protect that and make teams come in. You know, that's going to have a tough game, and I thought we did a great job putting our will on a lot of teams. It's a great place to play, and we had a ton of fans come out, and we hope that continues. All right, let's go off the board a little bit and talk about some pregame speeches, some memorable moments from 2012. Anything that you're going to look back on and say, that was a fun, crazy time for Stevenson Mustangs lacrosse? Well, you know, I think, you know, we had a bunch of those moments this year building up the team. And, you know, we'll keep a lot of the stuff in the locker room, stays in the locker room, I think. But, uh, you know, I think these guys, I think the seniors really took effect. You know, I think it was after that Western New England game. We knew we had to play better. The seniors had a really good meeting in the locker room after that game. And I thought really kind of spurred us on to make us understand what we needed to do in order to win and what was acceptable to play at Stevenson and what wasn't acceptable. And I think those seniors really did a great job making them understand that. And uh, I think that was a big pivoting time for us in the season. We went on a great run after that, getting some really quality wins against some really good teams and I thought that really helped shape what this team was all about. One of the things that you and I discussed in a pregame interview with sfmsports.net was the road trip out to Ohio Wesleyan at the end of the year. You guys go out there, play a great game, but it's also it's a team-building experience. Talk a little bit about some other team-building aspects of Stevenson lacrosse that a recruit might want to know about before they get here. Maybe an incoming freshman wants to look in and see what they can expect to go through uh, with that team-building experience. Well, we do a lot of that. You know, we really want our guys to make sure that everybody gets along. We do our, you know, our family mo our motto is family here. You know, everybody getting along. We meet with all those freshmen early on, and all the players are on to let them know where they stand with the program, what they need to do to get better, not only on the field, but off the field being a person. You know, we really try to – biggest thing that we try to do in our program is we turn boys into men, you know, when they leave here, and they're better people when they leave here than when they get here. So these are all things that we try to do and talk to them about how to act in the society nowadays, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. And I think we build that up through all all, all culture all year talking to them communicating with them about what we do we do some military training and we do some other team bonding things that I think work really well for our program and the guys that come together and knowing what it takes to be a team and a family in order to win so those are some of the things that you know we're, we're working on and and uh, we always develop that we always kind of move forward whether it's speakers or alumni coming back talking to the guys and making them understand what it, what it takes to play lacrosse here 
And you reference speakers. In my experience as a head coach, I used to always like bringing in other people to speak to the team because they get used to that same voice. Uh, can you expand a little bit on some of the people who came in to speak to the Stevenson team this year? Uh, well, we had a few alumni that come back. You know, Jimmy Daly came back and uh, talked to the guys, and we had a few guys that um, who were original part of the team when they were here that when they didn't have all this weren't as good. You know, we have them kind of come back and talk. So the alumni, I think, are real important to come back to talk to the team because the guys really understand how well they have it now. And those guys didn't to make them understand what a great place it is. And I think they do and understand um, what it takes to play here and what it means to play here. And so they do a great job. You know, we also had the program, Air Capitula, talk to the team one time. You know, it was a great thing for the experience for us, to, that military training, to go through that and see what it takes. Those military guys really put you through a lot. And I think that really helps well uh, uh, with the team and developing that you know, leadership and toughness you need, uh, mental toughness you need. And uh, so those are a few of the, the speakers we had. And, you know, we're going to continue to always do that. What are some of the things that you guys do on the bus, like some uh, fun things? You have some freshmen initiate, like, do you have any songs that they have to sing? Do you have any, you know, obviously hazing never happens, but it's one of those things where it's a fun way to bond with the team, and it's a fun way to, you know, just do something other than throw a lacrosse ball around and worry about who's scoring and who's playing defense. Uh, you know, the bus is always fun. You know, the guys can tell a few stories that they want or do anything like that if it's a good story. We try to keep it, you know, as clean as we can, obviously. But, uh, you know, we don't make them do any of those things. You know, the bus ride, I think a lot of times the guys get, their, especially in the games over, to get their schoolwork done, uh, you know, get ready for the next day and understand what they need to do. And, and the ride up is usually always pretty calm. So we don't do too much in the bus, but, you know, you know the guy, <laughs> but we do have a, once in a while they tell a few good stories. We'll let them do that. There's always some fun moments that come out of that. And like you said, you know, what happens in the locker room tends to stay in the locker room. The guys understand that. Sometimes the bus ride gets a little bit fun, and it's and it's good. And that's why you take a long trip out to Ohio Wesleyan. You kind of sequester the team for a little while and let them just really get to know one another so that they have that sense of family like you talked about. Uh, what can we expect next year for the schedule for Stevenson in 2013? Uh, well, you know, we're going to the MAC conference, so obviously we're going to lose some of our CAC foes, and like in St. Mary's and Wesley and uh, Mary Wash, we won't be playing. We'll be move on to play like Elizabethtown and Alvernia and Albright and uh, Widener. You know, those will be uh, mainstays on our schedule now. But you know, we, we're going to play, continue to play Salisbury, uh, Lynchburg will be there, Denison will be there, Corlin and Tufts will be there. Uh, we have Goucher on the schedule now. They had such a great year last year, being 17 and uh, two, I think. You know, great to add them to the schedule. Uh, we're hoping they add Rona. You know, right now we've heard from them. We're trying to figure that out in Cortland, obviously. So, you know, we have a great out-of-conference schedule as always. We want to play the best teams, and we'll play them anywhere. And But a lot of those big games will be here again. You know, we could play Tufts at home and uh, Cortland at home, and uh, we'll play uh, hopefully Roanoke at home, and uh, Salisbury's away. Uh, Denison will be away. But, you know, we got some great home games as well as some good road trips. So let's talk a little bit about Paul Cantabene and what you have going in the offseason. Summer is now upon us. We Memorial Day's come and gone. Uh, what's on your schedule for this summer? Uh, well, a lot of it will do with recruiting. You know, me and my staff will get out there and we'll see our six or 7,000 kids and get to all these tournaments. And, you know, we'll start bringing those kids on campus and talking about Stevenson. And hopefully we can get a, another group of good kids in 2013. And, and then I also have my facility duties to keep upgrading the, the facilities here at Stevenson and some on the different programs and the mail side of my associate, uh, associate AD responsibilities. But it's always busy. It never dies down. And uh, But, you know, we're looking forward to another great year recruiting as we did this year. And hopefully in the end uh, we'll have some strong players and uh, some better facilities. Tell us a little bit about the off-season workouts. What sort of expectations do the guys have going into summer as far as you know, strength and speed work, agility work? Uh, when does fall ball start, and how do you get all of that going for an upcoming or incoming freshman? Well, right now, you know, we get they have their workout programs for the summer. We hired a full-time weight coach who's starting on uh, June 11th, so those guys will be able to come here and be able to work out with him now. And it's getting bigger, faster, stronger over the summer is the most important thing. It's really tough to do that during the season. These guys really have to understand this is when they're going to get better. You know, they have to get out there and really work hard and, you know, shoot every day and run every day and, and uh, do all those little things to get better and get in the best shape possible. They sit on the couch all summer, and they're going to come back. They're not going to be very good players. So we expect them to do that. And uh, if they don't, then, you know, they don't play. You know, it's pretty simple. Then, but once we get them on campus, you know, our weight coach will take over and hopefully get them going and get them into working out the situations that we want them to do, you know, bigger, faster, stronger type things. And then we start fall ball uh, mid-September, and then we end up with our fall ball with the Megan Pauls Classic. Coach Pauls is a memorial tournament for Coach Pauls' daughter, and we hope they have uh, three good, great teams come for a great day of lacrosse right here at Mustang Stadium to help support that great cause. 
Again, Coach Paul Cantabene joining us here on SFMSports.net. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Great experience to really dive into how the Stevenson Mustangs lacrosse program becomes a national power. Uh, so thank you very much for being a part of it. Uh, thanks a lot. Appreciate your time. Again, Booker Corgan, Paul Cantabene, thanks for making SFMSports.net your home for great Mustangs lacrosse.